Hello, sixth grade scientist. One common thing that all scientists do is keep a detailed dated and labeled notebook with detailed drawings, sketches, and notes. And that's what we're going to do, just like Einstein, just like Edison. We're on our way. Take a permanent marker and write your first and last name on the front cover of your marbled notebook. And write plant unit because that is our first unit of study this year. I'll give you a moment to do that. Every time I say pause, it's your time to do something. Pause. Okay, at this point you should have written your first and last name and the words plant unit. Let's move on. Next we're going to make a table of contents. There's always a table of contents in a really good scientist notebook. And we're going to use the front and back of four whole sheets. At the top, in the center, you'll write the words table of contents and underline it. And then you'll put the date, the title, and the page headings. I'm going to say pause now and give you a moment to do that. Do not number these pages only put the things that I've told you to put on there. Pause. Good job! At this point you should have four whole sheets front and back set up for a table of contents. So the table of contents should have been written at the top and centered on all four pages and you should have had your four columns for date, title, and page. There's really no need to put lines in between, but if that's the way that you'd like it to look, you could do that at another time. All right, let's move on. The next thing that you're going to do is turn to the very end of your notebook. You're going to focus on the last full front and back of your last three pages, and we're going to make an index. The index is a place that we will visit whenever we are using words for our word wall. So you are going to take the last three pages and you're going to write the word index and underline it in the center of every page. And then, just as you see pictured in the picture, you are going to split in four quadrants, an A, a B, a C, and a D section and any word that starts with A we'll put under A, any word that starts with B you'll put under B, and so on. And so you are going to do it for A, B, C, D on this first page, flip it over to the back. It will be E, F, G, and H on the next page, and all the way to the end of the alphabet. When you do get to X, Y, Z, they need to be in the same quadrant. So X, Y, and Z will be all together. I'm going to say pause and give you a moment to do that. Pause. Okay, at this point you should have had all three pages of your index done. It should have had index written at the top middle on every single page. The top middle on every page and it should have had the whole alphabet finished and XYZ should have been in the same quadrant on the very last block. Alright, now let's move on. We're going to actually begin our notebook. On the first full page after our table of contents you are going to draw and write the guidelines for the notebook. So, as you see pictured in this, on the screen in front of you, we're going to write guidelines. I'm going to give you all of these notes and you're going to put them on this side. Nothing should be on the opposite side over here. It should have been the end of your table of contents. So, here we go. I am going to first read the guidelines and then I'm going to say pause and give you a moment to write them. You should not be writing at this time. These are the guidelines for a good scientist notebook. Teacher materials and instructions go on the left hand side of my notebook. So it will be on the left hand side. Anything that the teacher gives you will be on this side of the notebook. 
Student materials work like your reflections that you write on a, an experiment or something that you draw, something that you calculate, or any data, for, for instance, a chart or a graph. That will go on the right side of your notebook, so on this side. You're going to put a title, a date, and a page number on each of your pages. Not yet. I'm going to tell you when. You're just writing the guidelines in a second. And I can use pencil in my notebook, pen, colored pencils, or crayons. But never ever markers except when we make tabs. And I'm going to show you what a tab looks like in just a minute. So you can use pencil, pen, colored pencils, or crayons, but never markers except when we make tabs. All right, I'm going to say pause and give you a moment to write all this down. Pause. All right, at this point, you should have written all the guidelines. You should have written the first sentence, the second sentence, the third sentence, and the fourth sentence. You should have written the word guidelines and centered and underlined it. Now let's move on and see what we do next. Next, we're going to actually make one of those tabs I was telling you about. The very first tab that you make, will be it will be the very next page in the book. You're going to write lab safety. Don't worry about coloring it or making it look real pretty yet. You're going to have time for that later. All you do to make a tab is take the top of the page and fold it behind and take the bottom of the page and fold it behind and it makes a triangular extra thick piece of paper that's a real cool tab and this way we can find things much more quickly in our notebooks alright I'm going to say pause I want you to fold your triangle tab and write the words lab safety but do not worry about coloring or decorating it at this time pause all right, you should have your lab safety words written and your tab created. Let's move on. At this point, you're finally ready to start the real notes of your notebook. And there's something that every single note page needs. You always have to have a title, underlined and centered. You always have to have the present date the month, the day, and the year, and you always have to have a page number in the bottom right hand corner. So the bottom right hand corner gets the page number, the top right hand corner gets the date, and the center top line gets the title for whatever's happening on the page. I want you to take a moment. When I say pause, I'd like you to number page one, turn it around, and on the opposite page, write page two, turn it to the next page, page three, four, and five. And I want you to uh, just go ahead and worry about numbering. And at this time, go ahead and pause, and I'll allow you to number, and then we're going to make another tab. Pause. At this point, you should have numbered pages one through five. I don't want you to go farther than five because the next thing we're going to do is make a tab. We're making another triangle tab and you're going to call it controlled experiments. So I want you to take a moment, fold your triangle over and write controlled experiments. After you're finished writing it, remember, you'll have time later to decorate it. So I'm going to say pause, give you a moment to write controlled experiments and pause. Now I do want you to know something. When a teacher gives you the correct way to spell something, you're expected to spell it correctly on your paper. So if we're giving you the spelling C-O-N-T-R-O-L-L-E-D, we want you to write the word controlled correctly. If we spell experiment E-X-P-E-R I-M-E-N-T-S, that's how we want to see it on your tab. We don't want you to put the M over here and the P over here. You've got to try to be a great speller in sixth grade. All right, pause. 
All right, now you should have your, your controlled experiments tab. Let's move on. Don't forget you should have continued numbering each page front and back up to page 5, then you should have stopped, and you don't want to move too far ahead at any time. Like see how we stopped and made our controlled experiment tab? That tab should have been made after page 5. So if we go too far ahead, you'll never know when we need to stop and make a tab. And tab pages never have numbers on them. Well, you've set up your notebook. There you are. Scientist, let's have a great year.